Welcome to the next lecture in our series in television and studio production uh, at De Anza College. This tracks the Zettel book. This is chapter 14 and 15, and this will be on studio and field production. All right. And we start with different places um, that we have, you know, the different definitions, different de uh, places in our uh, studio production. Of course, here's our studio uh, and our studio there. I'm pointing out also the two different cycloramas that we have, the two different psychs. We've got a black one and a green one. Somewhere back there, we have a, a mauve colored one that's a little whiter. And then we have a hard psych off to the to the side over here that we can't see that is is green also. So that's our hard psych. The, the, that um, wall there. Um, our monitor stack is where we see all of our, uh, uh, you know, all of our monitors. And the, the TD, the technical director sits over here, the director making the calls right here. And in the back, we have our producer and our teleprompter. These are all locations in our um, control room, all right? And also off to the side of the control room, we have our character generator, our CG people, and we have the audio uh, room in the back. And then don't forget, we also have master control. Master control at our place there at, in the ATC room is kind of small, but it, it does the switching it needs to do. Basically, what happens in, in master control rooms is that signals come in from out of house, from out some, somewhere like maybe out in the field or from a satellite field, uh, feed or from the network, gets routed into there. And from master control, then we can route it into to our uh, control room. And then the signal from our control room then also can get um, routed out of the building to wherever that needs to go. Now, from our master control at De Anza, we can route signal to other places. And it's also set up to take um, video feeds from, like if they did a remote in a classroom, it's set up for that too. This is a master control. This one happens to be at, I believe, KPIX. Okay. And the master control rooms in a lot of these uh, stations now are very intricate. So you have the place where you record. So we do have recorders set around here like we have here, but then we have also another monitor stack so we can monitor sources and we can monitor where our feed's going to. So ENG is the process of electronic news gathering. ENG is electronic news gathering. And this is what you know, people do when they're watching the evening news or the local news, that's ENG. And when you set some, send somebody out in the field to do some ENG, you usually send out a videographer who is a shooter and that person records the story. And when you're a videographer, you have to assess the situation, operate the equipment and capture the essence of the event. So as a videographer, you're telling an important part of the story. So you need to set up, you know, in some sort of place that helps tell the story of, of, of what is going on. A lot of times you'll see people, um, I'll see shots of somebody reporting about a, um, a, a school board meeting right? And they're outside of a school and the school's dark. I mean, the school's lit up because they've got street lights, but there's not nothing going on at school, right? But they want to set up outside of the school because they want to talk about issues that were happening in the school board meeting. So sometimes you choose a background that, you know, if you think about it, it doesn't make much sense because nothing's going on there, but the background actually helps tell part of the story. Also, something else um, to, to tell you about being a videographer um, in a lot of smaller markets, you as the talent, as the reporter, the actual person doing the reporting will also, you may also be your own videographer. So you may be setting things up on a tripod. So you don't have your own camera person that's shooting you. You set the shot on your, on your tripod and set the background, all those sorts of things. Then you turn on the recorder and you get in front and, and report the news. So don't think that you're always going to have the benefit of a videographer. Everybody needs to know how to assemble a shot, put the shot together and, and all the, the backgrounds and foregrounds and do all the lighting for that too. And being able to assess the situation can help tell the, 
the event. Now with a reporter, um, when you have a reporter, place a reporter in a location that helps tell the story, like in front of the school, even though school's not happening, um, you generally want to use a shaded area rather than something in direct sunlight or behind uh, or in front of a brightly lit background. Okay, so if it's too sunny, you're going to need some sort of shade um, pop up or some, you know, tent to, to uh, help you out uh, or, you know, look for shady areas. And then, of course, you know, watch out for street lights or the sun behind uh, your your reporter. Um, and then also notice objects in the background. A common, you know, we talk about people with the lampshades on their head, you know, watch out. Do you have street lines, signs that are going to be, you know, crashing in to your shot? Uh, so watch, notice what's going on in the in the background. You have to protect from the wind. Um, so sometimes be careful with that and then avoid small rooms and hallways because of of reflected sound. And so this is really important, like in, in sports production, they're trying to interview um, um, athletes as they come in and out of the locker room. Well, what does the sound like that? Is the hallway too crowded? Is it the hallway itself too reverberant in sound? So be careful with that and always, always white balance, right? You always white balance when you're in a new location, a new set of conditions. So if you move the camera to, and, and uh, relative to, you know, lighting, all of that, white balance, white balance. So here are just some pretty pictures of some new sets. This is an older KTVU set, but they were using this new set for a while. This is KGO right here. They're using this, this set um, right now. And it's kind of neat because you've got over here, you've got your, your anchor desk over here. You've got a breakdown over here. You can't see it, but the, the person giving us a tour is talking to a bunch of people around a desk here. The students that were there on the on the tour that day. And that's a, another um, debriefing desk where you can put a, a, an anchor over here to give another report, kind of break up the, the visuals there. And we have a weather, weather center over here. You can see behind these cameras, there's a weather center. So this is where the weather person will be here. And there's even another um, debrief right there. And they have a green screen. And, and interestingly enough, at KGO, their green screen is way over here off off to the right of the camera so a lot of times when they when the, they'll start with the weather person the, the anchor will throw to the weather person the weather person's in the weather center saying yeah this and this and that well let's go to the map right and while, while they're going to the map that the uh the the person, the weather person has to walk all the way over here and then steps in frame for the weather map. That's the way it works at, at KGO. Um, this is the old um KPIX set, they they just replaced their set in the last 12 months. But here's their uh, anchor, right? Here's their kind of weather center. This is another debrief center that they really didn't use that much. And here's their green screen. And they're doing something different besides green uh, using a green screen for, for their weather uh, uh, setup. Um, these are newsroom kind of sets. So here at these locations, instead of actually having a set, a news set like we just saw, they will have a working newsroom with people gathering news at the time, right? And people who are making phone calls and people who are writing stories. And then they place the, the anchor right in the middle of all of this. And so they're using the, the actual newsroom, the working newsroom as part of the set. So these are newsroom sets, you know? And, and so all, all three of these have uh, news gatherers around them. And in and took a trip to, to KPIX, right? And they have a newsroom as well, but their newsroom is in another room, not very telegenic, as we would say. So they have their own people gathering the news, making phone calls on their computers, writing stories, all of that good stuff, right? And they are in a separate room next door to the news studio, right? Here is their master control room, showed a picture of the master control room. And here's an interesting thing that, a that you'll see all the time on television and on cable is that they want another place to, to put 
a, a, a reporter in. And it would be very boring if, if all the news happened at the anchor desk. So they'll take a reporter and they'll put them in front of the master control. Right. And at KPIX, they have a boot, they have a, a, a debrief desk right here with this camera. And the background is this right here. So here's the shot from this camera. Right. And so now we have uh, this reporter who is, you know, using master control as their background, but it's a lot more visually stimulating and so they can bring this in and so here we have uh the reporter um in the studio at the anchor desk talking to somebody in the newsroom and they're just next door in a newsroom but visually it's a lot more exciting breaks up the the picture we could have material we could have film material sitting next to elizabeth elizabeth cook but that would be boring right so we use this convention to to break it up make it more you know, visually entertaining. This is the same sort of thing that they have at KGO. Their uh, newsroom is actually on another floor. So their, their um, studio and control room are one floor. The newsroom is, is a floor below, right? But they have the same sort of setup. Here's their debrief desk with the um, camera facing master control. And if you turn this camera around, they also have another desk down here in the newsroom. So they actually have a little mini newsroom set up. And sometimes for the midday news, um, they come down here and they actually do their midday news out of here instead of the main uh, studio upstairs. And in our newsrooms, we have an assignment desk. The assignment editor figures out what stories we're going to be covering what's what's happening right now that we need to roll out on and send a news crew to well, where do we need to send a news truck to um and so they are listening to scanners they are listening to the competition right they're listening to the network they're listening to other news sources to see what's going on around the world and locally and nationally so that they figure out what are they going to put plug in together on the you know, on the evening news or what, whatever news. Now, this is the KPIX um, assignment desk. When I was there that day, boy, there was some stuff going on there. You could cut the tension with a knife. You know, it was really, you know, there was some news happening that these guys were chasing. And from this, and then they will assign different, you know, news crews and different reporters to, to go work on different stories. This is the actual assignment desk. Here's the newsroom. This is the assignment desk in here at KGO on the floor down here. And this is this is a shot looking from you know inside here from the, the assignment desk when I was there at KGO that day. It was pretty chill. And the assignment editor got up to you know take a little break and I ran back there and took a little uh, picture of, of his location right there. Um, we have weather centers, and this is just another desk where the weather people are, right, to do their, um, do their reporting. And so they give them a little area where they, you know, they can have their graphics and call them up right here. And, and if you need to, you can have a little conversation between the anchors and the weather um, person, the weather caster, so they can throw back and forth to each other and be a little bit more conversational. And then, of course, eventually they get in front of that green screen, right, to do um, their, their report. Now, this is the KGO one I was talking about earlier. So the weather center's right here, and then they've got to walk. Mike Nico or Drew Tuma, or whoever's doing the, um, the weather, has to walk over here and then get in front of the green screen, right? This is a prototype green screen that um, KPIX had for a number of years, and they went to something else recently that was really pretty cool. Um, but this is a projection screen. I mean, this is like two TV screens put together, and they can either make it green like that, or they can put the map here. And they didn't like this at the time because the technology wasn't quite there. Well, the technology is there now. And so in their main studio, they have something more like this. It's a little larger, a little clearer, and they don't really use the green screen part of it. They, they actually can put up a map, the weather map with full graphics. And so instead of using a key effect to do the green, you know, the green screen, the weathercast in front of the green screen, they can 
actually put the the uh, weather caster and that weather caster can look right at the um, projection right here, just like you do um, uh, from home when you're viewing this and they can walk up to it and point to it, that sort of thing. Aesthetically, the weather person has to be careful not to turn their back to the camera. And that's my one, that's my one pet peeve is when the weather caster turns their back to the camera to look at this, right? How we saw this in the green screen days um, is that we have monitors off to the side and you can see there's a monitor off to the side here. There's another set of monitors over here. So when you're up here and here we've got it marked on the floor, when you're up here doing your, your cast and you're maybe talking to the camera which is out this way sometimes you take a look sideways and you can you can see what's happening in the green screen and the monitor there you also get teleprompter here too and other data or or monitoring if you need that too so that's the common trick is that if i have the green screen behind me i do have a green screen I should have put it down here for this. Oh my goodness. So, but in a pro setup, you have monitors over here so that when they're going, oh, over here today in Santa Clara County, right? And they're pointing at the web, you know, they're pointing at the, the graphic, but they're actually monitoring themselves on a monitor or a soft camera so they can see what they look like. Takes a bit of a knack to get used to, but once you do, once you get it dialed in, it, it works really well. And let's see, we've got the control room of KPIX, right? Here's their monitor stack right here. Old school, at least here, they have that old school video switcher. I want to say old school uh, in that there's a real video switcher, right? Uh, because when we go to the KGO control room, we're using the automated um, production control kind of thing, right? The APC. So this operator does not have a video switcher in front of them they have a program they have programmed in all the graphics programmed in all of the camera moves and um things like that and and the video roles uh, are programmed in here and once he's pre-programmed it he's just pushing buttons so to do the kgo newscast it just takes one person who's, who's operating the cameras from remote and doing all the video switching and on the APC unit, this person here is, is a uh, producer. And this person is making sure that whatever the story is, that they're reading it properly and that we're not getting in any legal problems, right? So they, they will be in, in, the, um, in the anchor's ear there with the, the uh, talk back with, uh, and, and telling them, hey, we need to correct this or that. And then off camera to the back is somebody who's actually rolling teleprompter. That really still needs a human to roll the teleprompter, All right? You can't, it, it's, you, you can't automate that yet. Maybe, maybe someday they will. But right now we haven't figured out a way to automate tele, teleprompter. And then in the studio, even though the cameras are robotic and the shots are, sh shots are pretty much set up already we do have a floor director we do have a live human floor director wrangling all of all of the stuff that's going on in there now at kpix they have a huge studio and a huge location so they they also have this studio off to the side this isn't their new studio this is some random huge large studio space that they made right and they hold debates in here. They can hold um, uh, all sorts of large kind of news gathering kind of things here. And uh, over on the wall here is something like is some storage for lighting instruments, a lot like what we have um, at, uh, at De Anza. All right, going to take a little. Uh, I found this. All right, this is Gassia Michalelian, and she is from KTVU. She does the mornings on uh, on KTVU. And this is a little thing that she put together about what her day's like. Let's let's take a look at this. Sammy, what time do you get here? I get here about 2.30. You're not the first one in. Nope. Hi, 
Chelsea. Hi, Chelsea. Hi, Gracias. Producer Chelsea. We've got El Nino. Okay. Myths. We have some of the hot toys of the season, including some of the Star Wars toys that everyone wants to get their hands on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Heavy rain and high winds hit the Bay Area this morning. Ooh, sorry. I joined you for the next hour of Mornings on 2. It could be the largest unclaimed prize in California state history. Okay, so my microphone is on. I'm going to give you the view that I get walking into the Mornings on 2 studio. And we say good morning, good morning. We're in a commercial. Yes. Dave Clark, what do we do during commercial? Relax. We stand yeah. up, stretch. Yeah, dear, our morning legs stretches. Our stretch. Calisthenics. All of that before 10 o'clock in the morning, <laughs> all right? So um, at KTVU, they, they do a, a, a show from basically, what, what, what was it, six to seven, right? And that's the one you see Dave Clark on. And, um, and then at, from seven to nine, they do their, their you know, main show. The one's an early show, one's the main show. And then at nine, they do, um, the nine which is an after show but it's basically a news show still it's still the same news show and they've they've updated the newscast and things like that they actually do it on a different floor in a different studio for that morning's um for the nine so they're they're using different spaces and they're broadcasting news all of this time right from basically six to ten all right and then there's a new news Right. And then they go do it again for um, the, the four and five. You know, they may even do a do a six. I'm not a, um, a sure on that, but they may. And then there's a, a 10 and 11 o'clock news. So there's a lot of news going on in your local station that you may not be aware of. And a lot of production going on, by the way. It's not a glamour gig. Gosh, is doing her own hair and makeup. Right. Right. So does Sal. <laughs> so they do that. Okay, so we also can have some virtual sets here instead of green we're, we're using blue, but we electronically put in the set that's going on and sometimes you see this in cable quite a bit where you have this virtual set. This is, really takes um, some computer power because you have to have the cameras all coordinated so that if the cameras are shooting from different places, the background moves with it. All right. So this is kind of hard for us to set up in our studio because we kind of have to manually do it and we have to set the shots and lock the cameras down and take different shots of the background and, and put those in. And Ed can help us do that. We can't really do the virtual set like they do it in the pros where they have some software that keeps the background um, in the right perspective all the time. So let's see electronic news gathering how does it get back to the studio we send somebody out in the truck right and so here's the truck right here and it's a microwave that that goes up here they extend the mast and that goes back to the station now they might be bouncing off of somewhere else they might like i know downtown sometimes they bounce off of the uh bank of america building at least they did but i have a feeling they're using the salesforce tower now and so they can beam it up to the salesforce tower and then down to the battery street or whatever wherever the the studio is located and they might be using coyote ridge at at um 
in in the south bay because that's the big antenna farm up there and i know in the east bay uh, a lot of the trucks um beam up to mount diablo because there's a big antenna farm up there and then from mount diablo they can beam it over the east bay hills or into the south bay and then down to the st studios now we also have this this is microwave this is satellite so these satellite trucks they actually are beaming to they're sending their signal up to a satellite and then that gets downloaded to the network so like if you're at espn or something like that you could be at a, a sporting event going up to the satellite and then that would be coming back down to atlanta or connecticut wherever um they're they're broadcasting the um anchoring the um sports from so that's electronic field production that's part of this we also or excuse me electronic news gathering this is electronic field production efp and basically it's the same thing except that it's not news all right so it's anything that can that we might go out on location for but it's not news gathering all right we're we're doing we could be doing a documentary do we could be broadcasting a game we could do making a, a news magazine story and editing that later we could be doing investigative reporting travel shows i woke up one morning turned on the tv and somebody is is they're doing yoga on the beach in Hawaii, which would be a great EFP. Wouldn't that be a great production to work on? I'm, yeah, I'm shooting yoga on the beach in Hawaii. And then second unit productions, basically that's you know something you could be shooting in the studio for some sort of production, but you need to go out on location and, and shoot something at lo in, on location. That's kind of what the second unit productions are about. Now, in pre-production, you're going to do a remote survey and this happens in film too you do a location scouting well you also do a a, a, a remote survey and in, in, in television production too so you want to scout for um, host and talent positions where you're going to put your cameras what where the lighting is best right what kind of set requirements you have or, or you're going to need what are your electrical needs you're going to need to bring generator do you have a, a, enough uh, electrical you know juice there on location do you need to bring backgrounds what are you going to be using for the backgrounds this is but these last two are really important who are your contact people when you go out on on remote you're usually doing this on somebody else's property right so you want to make sure that you you are in contact with the people who are allowing you the use of the space and you keep in good contact with them uh, and they can also help you in figuring out oh uh, we have an electrical problem here's who you need contact or we we have we need more sets we need to go and get uh, some things for your sets well uh, we can bring this up from the basement or whatever and then sometimes where where you go you're going to need permits to shoot so you need to to check that out and see if you've got the proper permits so in your remote survey you may do a location sketch and here are a couple of location sketches that are in the book this one is a a an outdoor location this one is an indoor location and it's a good idea to to um write in different things like on our indoor location we've got ac outlets on all walls right and we need to know where are we getting our, our, our electricity from uh, this one has okay, okay here's what our backgrounds like here's what some other things that are going on and, and so we could set up here or here with cameras yeah right and this is outside this is a pretty interesting one right here sun travel right because you're going to need to know where the shadows are going um and what's you know what kind of lighting options are going to happen with that another one uh where's where are the facilities are at and where are we all going to park so there's different kinds of things you need to to look at at your um in your loco locations sketches um take a look at them in the book pretty interesting and then you'll have a checklist in fact um if you're doing location work all the time you probably will have some sort of truck or kit or something that will have all of your stuff but you still need to go through your checklist to make sure you have your cameras uh and mounts 
what kind of recording media, what are you doing for electricity, are all your, what what's happening with your audio gear and cables, connectors, monitors and test equipment, Okay, because something's going to happen on on the road, something's going to happen on location, and you're going to need to get out your test equipment and figure out why is this not working right, right? And so your engineers are going to have to figure that out. So you need some things to do some quick repairs in the field. Um, wh what are your lighting needs? How are you going to talk to each other? Maybe you have some wireless intercom and other miscellaneous things. Now, you always want to prepare for the weather. So umbrellas are good. It's Great to have coats and hats and things like that. Not that you're going to need them all the time. Boots, but you never know. Always respect the property that you're on. Okay, You are there at the behest of somebody else. So you want to make sure that you res uh, respect the, the property. And, and so, you know, you don't, you, that's what the last bullet point here is clean up, right? So you do want to take care of your trash and, and leave things. A lot of people say, I want to leave it better than when I found it. And that's a, that's a good uh, attitude to have, right? You want to be concerned for safety because you're in, you know, the studio is a very controlled environment. So we know where the pitfalls are. We have our safety chains and, you know, we make sure, you know, we have our wheel locks on. But when you're out in the field, there's all sorts of things that you're, you don't intend to have happen. So you want to be very concerned for safety. Want to do, take notes take notes you need accurate logging um because somewhere along the line you may have an example would be like well uh so and so says that you can go get, get your electrical over here right and so you're running along and all of a sudden somebody who runs that property goes what are you why are you plugged in over there you can't you can't plug in over there and you want to go through your notes and say well you know so and so who runs the property says i could Right, because you're going to have those kinds of issues. So you need somebody who's taking notes for you, writing down where things have gone, who's giving you permission for what, you know, and why you made certain decisions. And then, of course, you got to strike and clean up. And you're done. Here's some pretty pictures of some electronic field production kind of trucks. Right, basically, you know, you you may have a truck like this, and this is where your studio is. Right. And I don't know if anybody's into RVing, you know, recreational vehicles, but they have this thing called a, they have these slide outs on these trailers. And basically it's a box in a box. So you have your trailer, you're going down the road like this. You get to the location and the box within a box slides out. And now all of a sudden you've got a wider thing, right? You've got a wider room and you can put more in it. So here we've got a panoramic shot of, uh, of a control room. Here's the monitor stack, but then we've got our director and producers and, and more producers back here. Here's some more pretty pictures of the video switcher. And again, the, the uh, producers and directors. Oh, isn't this a wonderful audio studio right here? Amazing. Five point um, five one <laughs> surround there. Uh, an audio studio. That's in a truck. That is in a truck. And then I happened to be at a football game a long time ago when I had my flip phone. Please excuse the, the fuzzy pictures here, right? But I took some pictures. Here is the studio truck, right? And here's the slide out right here. So this goes slides back in when they're on the road and slides out, make that wider room. And, you know, the T the uh, director and TV comes up one way uh, and the uh, sound people come up another way right here. This is at San Jose state right here are all your electrical and video connections and, and audio connections too. They all come at one point in the truck and at the Spartan stadium, they have this hydrant here that has all the electrical and some of the places where if, if you need Need to, to have a camera up in the stands you have a camera in the stands and the and then the, it's wired down to this place in the hydrant you can plug into there right so all the your connections for both video some audio and some um electrical is is here too more and more they're using wireless video and wireless um microphones but for a lot of the static camera positions they they're still wired Here's another view of the truck from, from another angle. And then the truck, the semi truck also rolls with the satellite uplink, right? And so the signal that's coming out of here eventually goes into this truck and gets beamed up to the satellite. So it can go to the mountain west, 
or the Pac-12 or whatever network is is using it, right? And it and and that's how it gets broadcast down down the line. Okay, electronic news gathering, right? Is ENG electronic field production is EFP. Be sure to read chapters 14 and 15 and and do the quiz and uh, and uh, that's our lecture for today.